They say that they are dangerous to man, that their power and hunting skills are to be feared. But if so, why do many people who encounter sharks tell a different story? How on earth can one animal be perceived in such contrasting ways? I'm Sarah Richmond, marine scientist, shark researcher and ocean conservationist. I'm fascinated by sharks and the role they play within the world's ecosystem. I'm going to take you on a journey around Australia, showing you some of the most diverse and amazing marine environments our great country has to offer. We'll be meeting shark experts, shark lovers, and coming face to face with lots of Australia's sharks. Join me as I experience the highs and lows of mankind's interactions with these wondrous creatures. Throughout this epic adventure, I will share with you the story of the shark and uncover the frightening truth about their fight for survival. It's amazing to think that humans at the top of the food chain can be so undeniably terrified of a single animal. An animal that has roamed our world unchallenged for over 400 million years and is now so grossly misunderstood that they may not survive to swim in the centuries to come. Sharks are ancient creatures of the ocean. The earliest sharks date back to over 420 million years ago, long before the time of the dinosaurs. Around 500 species of shark live in our oceans. They range in size from the tiny dwarf lantern shark, measuring just 17 centimetres, to the giant whale shark that can grow to more than 12 metres in length. Of the 500 species around today, 182 can be found in Australia. And of these, an estimated 71 are endemic, meaning they can only be found in Australian waters. Of the 182 types of sharks found in Australia, 27 are listed on the IUCN's red list as near threatened to endangered species. There's an average of only one death from unprovoked shark attacks in Australia each year, while over 6,000 tonnes of sharks are killed here annually. We are a much bigger threat to sharks than they will ever be to us. I hope those facts got you thinking. Now it's time to pack the car, head down the coast and take you on a dive with the sharks. The place we will be diving today is located just 40 minutes south of the Queensland border. It is listed as one of the top 10 dive sites in Australia and is one of my favourites. And I cannot wait to get there. With its chilled out days and vibrant night scene, Byron Bay is a beacon for hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. They flock here to get a taste of the laid back lifestyle, enjoy the golden beaches and enjoy the breathtaking hinterland. One spot everybody should visit is the Cape Byron Lighthouse. It is situated on the easternmost point of the Australian mainland and the views from here will blow you away. Look out to sea and you'll catch a glimpse of what has brought us here, Julian Rocks. One of the best ways to see Julian Rocks is from up there. Named by Captain Cook in 1776, Julian Rocks sits within the Cape Byron Marine Park. This multi-zone park covers more than 22,000 hectares, from Brunswick Heads in the north to Lennox Head in the south. Multi-zone marine parks aim to conserve biodiversity while allowing for a wide range of activities. Humpback whales also travel through this area on their annual migration.
However, it is under the waves that the beauty of Julian Rocks can really be appreciated. Due to its unique location, warm tropical waters from the north mixed with temperate waters from the south, creating a year-round supply of rich nutrients for hundreds of fish species. In the summer, vast numbers of leopard sharks and the occasional manta ray call the rock home, whilst in the winter, a population of endangered grey nurse sharks can be found. There is a no-take zone around the rock, which has been in place since the early 80s, and this has allowed the resident fish species to flourish. Some of these resident species belong to one particular family of shark, the carpet shark, or more commonly known here in Australia as the wobbegong. In order to get a better look at these sharks, we need to head underwater. And to do that, we've come to Sundive. The trip out to Julian Rocks starts with a beach launch, and it's only a five minute boat ride to the dive side. In no time at all, I'm geared up and ready to get in the water. As I descend, the first thing I notice is that the visibility is low today. The second thing I notice is the jellyfish that kindly stings me on my top lip as it passes. I signal to the cameraman my now inflated lip and he shows his usual compassion by giving me an okay signal and swimming away. There is no problem finding marine life here, as it is everywhere. With over 1,000 described species, there is something for everyone, ranging from the very small to the very big. With so many species described, naming and identifying them has become something of an art form. The problem we face is that each species has a common name, and in many cases, several common names. This is where the scientific name comes in handy. Scientific names are made up of two parts, the genus and the species name. This name is unique to each individual species and it is internationally recognised. Therefore, this is the best possible way to identify marine life. As I slowly move through an area called the nursery, I spot my first wobbegong shark, Orectobolus maculatus, or more commonly known as the spotted wobbegong. This species is endemic to Australia and can grow to three metres in length. The collective name carpet shark refers to their camouflage coloration, allowing them to blend into rocky reefs. The name wobbegong is an Aboriginal name meaning shaggy beard. This comes from the many long skin flaps found around the mouth. There are 11 species of wobbegongs found around the world, with six species found in Australia, three of which you can see here at Julian Rocks. The next few sharks I see are all spotted wobbegongs, including what looks like a pregnant female. I add these to my tally. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I see a smaller, dark shape, and I find my second species of wobbegong, Orectobolus ornatus, or commonly known as the ornate or banded wobbegong. This species is smaller to the spotted wobbegong, with a maximum size of one metre. However, they are more widespread and can be found in Papua New Guinea, Indonesia and Japan. Wobbegongs prey on a range of marine life, including crabs, lobsters, fish, other sharks, rays and octopus. During the day, they lie in wait and ambush prey as they come in close. They can also be seen swimming in a sinuous style tracking prey across the reef, as seen here with a spotted wobbegong hunting an octopus. With a burst of speed, the wobbegong is upon its prey and with its jaws clamped shut, will try to subdue it. However, this octopus is not giving up without a fight. 
using its great arm span to throw itself over the Wobby's face. There appears to be somewhat of a Mexican standoff. Surely it's only a matter of time before the Wobby wears the octopus down. But like most things in life, there is no such thing as a free meal. And a second Wobby has smelt the prey in the water and comes in to try his luck. As the pair fight, we get an insight into how powerful these sharks can be. The first shark has seen off the greedy rival and retains his prize and is left to enjoy his meal in peace. The dive site now seems to be brimming with wobbegongs. You just need to look around and you will see them everywhere. As we head a bit deeper, we find our third species of wobbegong, Orectobolus halai, or commonly known as the Hales wobbegong. They grow to three metres in length and can be found in Australia and Papua New Guinea. Although we are seeing a large number of wobbegong sharks today, we have to remember that Julian Rocks has a protected no fishing zone that has been in place since the early 80s. Wobbegongs are caught and harvested in Australia and their meat is sold in fish and chip stores labelled as flake and the skin has been used for leather products. As a result of unmanaged fishing practices, all three species of wobbies we've seen today are listed as near threatened on the IUCN's red list of endangered species. With the shark count going well, I decide to have a bit of a cruise around to see what else I can find. I see two types of turtles, a hawksbill and a green, an alert anemone fish, and just as Matt had promised, a few leopard sharks. These are amazing animals that move so gracefully through the water. However, I best get back to the task at hand, my wobby count. I continue to look under ledges and corals and find more and more sharks. At the end of the dive, I tally up how many sharks we've counted. Luckily, I got to encounter all three species of wobbies found at the rock. 46 spotted, 22 ornate and 3 hails, coming to a total of 71 wobbegongs. Not quite the 100 that Matt had predicted, but with their laid-back demeanour and their camouflage coloration, they're quite easy to overlook. Many people who first see a wobbegong don't even realise they're having a shark encounter. And it is for this reason that we call them the Forgotten Shark. So I realised that not many people get to meet sharks, so I'm going to take the sharks to the people. The purpose of this exercise was to raise awareness about sharks. We handed out information cards and had our pictures taken with the locals so we could post them on our social media pages. Besides, running around Byron in a shark suit is a lot of fun. Many of the facts on the card pertain to sharks as food and the danger associated with eating shark. Not only the alarming levels of mercury, but also the ecological damage caused by overfishing. Despite the great work that shark conservationists do, the message is still not translating through to the big retailers, who by their sheer number of stores, have a damaging effect on shark numbers if they choose to sell shark meat. As the sun starts to set on Byron Bay, I reflect on my time here, the people I've met, the stories they've told, and of course, the sharks I've encountered. Seeing that many sharks in the water is truly awe-inspiring, 
I don't think you could ask for a better advertisement of a functioning marine park. Julian Rocks and the no take protection zone around it really is a treasure of nature. A shining example of what can happen if we could just learn to share the seas.